I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So I am actually going to request several amendments to the agenda. A couple oh. things got added and then moved just in the last three days here. So one of the amendments that's uh, going to need to be made is adding the 2025 meeting dates approval under new business. The second amendment will have to be I don't know if this is necessary, but the shortfall funds, that needs to be discussed before we make a motion to approve the approval of 27000 from the revolving loan fund. we got to talk about the shortfall before that. Um, third, we need to remove the love wine from the agenda, and that is under new business. Um, I don't know if we I think we need to move, but that's just something that's no longer going to be discussed at this meeting. So. I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with the changes. And Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, public comment. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, approval of minutes from the regular meeting on October 9th. Take a motion to approve the minutes of October 9th. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah, carry yeah. Carry. <laughs> uh, approval of financials uh, from 2024. Do you have any comments on that? Um, no, I would just like to point out the uh, revolving loan fund balance sheet in that financial report um, that will be discussed later on this meeting. So just kind of take, take note of that um, so it's in front of you so you have some actual material. One thing to note is um, Spicer Group um, had completed their first ad, so they will be getting paid out in this round. And then of course, um, the final payment from the EU fund. I apologize, how many was it? Uh, I'm sorry, Spicer. Yeah, I got that one. What was the second one? Uh, the Fall Festival okay. with uh, Port City and Port yep. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the financials. And motion. Thank you. Second, though. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, executive report. So this month I got the chance to go to Ann Arbor and attend the Michigan Downtown Association Conference. Uh, very informative. A lot of different professionals who work in DDAs across the state of Michigan. And, a lot of really cool programs taking place across the state, interesting initiatives where the DDA is uh, working closely with, with their cities or counties to, to bring to fruition bigger projects such as streetscape projects or complete revitalization of historic buildings. Um, historical preservation was a pretty big topic there and kind of leaning into that identity um, and making sure that buildings that actually have historical value are being revitalized in connecting developers with SHPO and federal resources that are out there to, to help with that construction. Um, other updates, Spicer Group's currently working through those um, engineering itemized costs that um, we paid them for based off of those renderings. Um, so we'll have the renderings and most likely itemized costs in front of this uh, board in the December meeting, which will be really exciting, actually have something visual to finally see from all that work um, that you know Brandon's done, and then also just 
Spicer putting putting in some work. Um, so looking forward to that. North Washington just finished their RFP that's been reviewed by Fishbeck and that's going to go public here in the next couple weeks. Um, and that's for work for the land bank dollars grant stabilization for that building on 141 Washington. So that that's fairly exciting. And then we also finished our facade round for, for this year and have three three applications that we're going to recommend are awarded in full. So that's also very exciting to, to have come to an end here. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, <clears throat> Reports from subcommittee, uh, facade drive. Yeah. So as Carmen mentioned, Spicer did finalize their work and turned in the right documents to get reimbursed for the 2023-2024 grant round. Um, for this year, the ad hoc committee is recommending the awarding the full amount of three applications. Those applications are 395 River Street, that's CC Jewelers building, then 334, 336, 338 River Street, that's one building owned by a gentleman, uh, and then the last is 429 River Street, that's the well nested building. So CC Jewelers is looking to repaint the front of their building um, and is requesting the amount of their total amount is 12060 um, so they're asking for $6,000. Um, the second application for 334, 336, and 338, they're <clears throat> requesting $13,822 for replacing of windows. Um, and then finally, well Nested is doing a complete renovation of their upstairs and is requesting the help replacement with uh, windows as well. Um, and that is going to be in the amount of $37,500. Um, and that leaves us with excess funds as well. So we've had five applications, two of them were not complete enough where the ad hoc committee felt comfortable making decisions uh, on recommending awarding them funding. So those applications, um, are still out there and kind of want to have it. We wanted to have a discussion after this point to uh, discuss excess funds, kind of how we go about using them. Um, and if we need to open it up to the public again, or if those two applications can be amended and make the necessary changes um, and then get awarded next meeting or the following meeting, or if it has to be a completely new grant round. But first, I would like to see a motion for the. Um, uh, awarding of these funds so we can uh, keep going on this program, get grant contracts out there. I'll make the motion that we um, approve the grant application recommendations as well. Put all three of them together. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Discussion. The two that are um, not complete, are we helping them mm -hmm. complete it? Yeah, so that a big part of completion and something that we've learned this round is it's really difficult to get quotes. So one of the reasons one of them was incomplete is because they had no quotes. You know, they had that architect had, had some renderings and design, but didn't have wasn't able to find anybody who was willing to do the work or at least come out and actually give a quote for the work. So in their application, they throw out numbers, but it's like, okay, what is this really based off of? You know, they say it's 60 grand of work, but it seemed like a lot of work where it could actually be sneaking up to, you know, closer to $100,000, $120,000 worth of work. Um, and so they've really been trying to get those quotes in. Um, and I've been able to, you know, without endorsing anybody, be like, hey, have you looked into this person or this person, you know, in the past? This is a company that's been used downtown. Uh, but it's, it's been difficult, and that's across the board. And all these applicants have made a comment of some shape or form of saying, hey, getting one is really hard. Having to get two is nearly impossible. Um, yeah. When we first started this, it was during COVID, and okay. they couldn't get anybody. So yeah. we extended the time frames a lot. You know, had kind of we earmarked those people who were in process, mm -hmm. but we kind of put that money off the side, knowing that they were in process. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the second one, that it's they had a complete application, they just didn't provide enough. Uh, 
for renderings or, or visual design samples where the board was like, okay, but what is this, what are you actually doing with it? You know, we don't know what this is going to look like. We don't feel comfortable endorsing this because we have no idea what the after uh, effect is going to be because you, you explain it, but what does that actually mean for the building itself? Uh, and so we're also working with them. Hey, can you get, get a little, couple, couple more samples? You know, is there any way you can get a rendering to us? Uh, Thanks. So. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And so the facade excess funds, um, as I mentioned, we do have excess funds, and it's a question of it. What do we do with the extra? Fifty plus thousand dollars that we have now still in this budget line, and with these two applications, do we let them return the proper information, have the ad hoc committee review them again, and then make another mm -hmm. recommendation, um, or do it, does it have to be another round grant round? Um, you know, or do we want to just roll this funding over to next fall? Do we have another round in February where contractors might be more available, um, but still? have kind of equal access to the fund so everybody has a fair shot at actually getting to it. Um. I would work with the people. Okay. I mean, you know, you got two that are trying. Um, that's just my thought. And, you know, you can give it a few months, but if they're, like, the person who doesn't do any renderings or anything, it's like, mm, okay, so in three months if you don't have anything, you might not be as motivated. But the person who's trying to get the bids, mm -hmm. it's different. Okay. That's my opinion. <coughs> Give him a chance. Okay. Um, those have to be to specific buildings in the downtown area, right? For like, um, I think about the marina, like the front of the marina to kind of update the doors and clean it up. And, you know, I, I, I wonder if we could ever apply that if we had excess mm -hmm. there. Just thought. Yeah, because we have an, we have an idea or. Okay, but you see, yeah, these two grants do, if they were awarded the full amount, it would surpass the budgeted amount, too. So the, with, amongst these two applications, there is enough to actually use up the, the rest of the funding um, if they are awarded in full. So. This is something to put out there to think about okay. as if we ever come in this situation, we don't have. Yep. One of them falls through. Yeah. I don't know if we okay. can do that with that or not. But. That's all. Uh, street's good. Kind of give that update in the executive report and Spicer's finalizing those numbers. They'll have them here in, in this, you know, in the next couple of days. Luke has been fantastic working on that. Um, and I mean, Bill, do you have anything to add? Just we did review them with Spicer, so they have unit costs, so we can expand certain treatments um, and <laughs> narrow them down. But the nice thing is, I think with the renderings that Brandon provided, um, the nice thing was even if we do it, it's not completely out of the realm of possibility the, the, the money we're talking about to do a lot. So I, I think I wasn't, the nice thing is, I guess that it's not an outrageous amount of what the initial scope we looked at. So, so I think some good news coming. So are you optimistic? <laughs> it's nice to get some good news every once in a while. Yay, it's a good day. <laughs> Uh, events? Events, so we do have the event planner discussion that was on uh, Deanna's request to continue that conversation. So that might be something that I don't know if anybody has any comments or, or further points to make on that from last meeting. And we have the attorney look at the rental agreement. So okay. Kind of, I think that's as a second item, but oh, okay. Go, but go, I mean, go for it. I just wanted to see if there I, was anybody who had any comments well, the on the event planner discussion. Oh, I assume it's a whole line item we're talking about. 
Yeah, it was put as a line item upon these requests. I understand. Yeah. Who, where, and how are we paying this person? So that that that's why it was a discussion. Yeah. Um, and I don't I don't I don't think the right players are at in, right, at this table to actually yeah. have that discussion in full. I mean, that was kind of made. Karen made that point in last meeting. Table, just like table this one. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. So the attorney looked over the the rental agreement bill. Yep. Sorry to jump over. No, you're, you're okay. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready to go with, with that agreement. And just another thing, just I think we would like to sleigh bell would like to use that some items from the trailer. So okay. That's one thing. That'll be fun. That'll be our first experiment. <laughs> We did technically have fall festival got to use a couple okay. items as well, but it's not fully stocked with everything. But I think what we have, we'd like to use for sleigh bill. Yep. And then we also have the event trailer pickup drop off procedure as well as street closure review criteria. And those are just procedural documents. Um, so if you had any discussion or points on, on either of those documents on concerns for the street closure review criteria, we did change it so there isn't that time constraint um you know so it's not the, we need to have it 60 days out or so because if there is going to be a time restraint you know let the city enforce that if they have a policy of 90 days that an application should get to us in a timely manner if that's being enforced on other the applications so we don't need one and we shouldn't have to really worry about having that in our procedure i'm sorry where, where did we end up on the event planner discussion we just Table one. Yeah. Table yeah. 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 We need Kyle. <clears throat> but even then, it's something that, you know, when you talk about an event trailer, or sorry, an event planner, it's something that, I mean, that would be a discussion between multiple different entities. And I feel like Bill's probably the only one who's one of those entities. I guess, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know if, if tourism, I don't think, well, I, I don't know if. Uh, so I think we want to have, have an ad hoc. Event committee, which has been focusing on sleigh bell, but okay. my plan is after that we're going to have some recommendations, and I think we'll we can have this discussion after those come out, and I can provide that to the DDA. Okay. So then it'll be a partnership there. <coughs> so you got a table. You got a table. I'll, I'll just add. I'm. I think that we should, that Andrew and the staff should move forward on these discussions, um, and we, the DDA had previously put out an RFP for. Uh, and planning and coordination. Uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, you know, partnership with other entities uh, or even the DDA on its own uh, to put out an RFP for response on proposals where you pay a, a small monthly stipend or something like that, and then uh, they're able to make money off the events. Uh, we have what, six, 12 liquor licenses a year. Um, and that's valuable. Uh, they can make money off beer tents, different things like that. Um, so I think having a professional, dedicated person uh, on our events will result in, in better events than what we currently have. Uh, and I think it'll be better for the communities. <coughs> So any comments on the trailer procedure or, or street review criteria? Good night. Yeah, fine Yep, so the proposed language is in your packet. Um, I've had the chance to sit down with everyone of you now to, to discuss what that program looks like. Um, you know, the language has been amended to, to be limited to really housing related projects um, and then any further restriction regarding activity would come from the application itself uh, but you know this has been a conversation for a long time and i think it's a really important tool to at least get started get that process started in its creation um, and that really starts with putting it in the tiff plan so it can go to the city council and that's you know that could take a minute or two and then really figuring out um, you know what that application, you know, making sure that that's reviewed um, by an attorney and making sure it's buttoned up. But I think it's an important tool to add in creating a better housing ecosystem. 
downtown especially because there are other programs we can create on top of this that could really bring downtown to a really attractive spot and give people who have underutilized second space to create housing in it, whatever capacity it may be you know i know it's a really desirable place for short-term rentals and making sure that you know even if that's the market that is getting created i think it's helping create commerce and make more attractive buildings downtown so i sat with andrew two days ago yeah. me into this this is what the board's about in my opinion putting these kind of programs together pushing up to the city <clears throat> so i'm 100 in favor of this this program i make a motion i'll make a motion that we move the tiff program if we it's, or a second yeah, thanks. Discussion. <laughs> do we need a more clear motion we on that, do. Nicole? Yeah, yeah, that approve yeah. the yeah, approve the like uh, yeah, the addition of all the TIF language. language. All right. yeah. uh, I make a motion that we uh propose of the TIF plan addition moving what to the city for approval at this point. Second. And I would just I think when we've talked, Andrew, I'm Board with it, I just think kind of focusing what it's going to be used for mm -hmm. in combination with an OPRA or something else. But if it's going to focus on housing or you know, there's kind of a need that's not currently you know addressed through other mechanisms, I think that's going to that's how we that's yep. how we sell it, that's how we package mm -hmm. it. I yep, I really again, I made the motion and I like it, I like it it's, it's the way it sits. But when I talk to Andrew, we're only focusing on the housing piece of it. Is there room for growth for commercial in the future or not? Just because commercial could be anything. Is that? Yes. I think there's a need for the housing. I mean, you're talking about firewall separations. You're talking about different things like, well, the elevators. I think there's a lot of, they all can tie into housing. But, but yeah. Potential expansion later. It's, I'm it's, it's, it's up to, I mean, at, at this point, it's up to what the DDA board decides that they, we'd want to limit it to. Uh, originally, we had suggested any of the uh, priorities identified in the TIF plan. Yeah, and you look at like Boynt City, Boynt, yeah, there's a range of uses. So Boynt City limits it to just, you know, out, outside facade and AD, any ADA activity that takes place. Um, and then there, there's one other, but it, they, you know, they, they have three columns of, hey, this is, these are how this gap financing is going to help fund projects, where other communities like Farmington do keep their language more broad, where they don't specify what activities they're going to fund with this. Um, state legislation does add some parameters on, you know, what exactly. Not a lot, though. Yeah, not, not a lot, but you could get into a legal debate as to what. So that's, that's where I'm going, as long as we have the room to make yep. adjustments in the future. We would have to go back and make a complete change to the TIF plan every time that we want to change something. I, mean, I think that incentives should be designed to you know achieve the priorities that the organization is has defined and set out. Um, and that was the you know, purpose of proposing this. Um, at the, you know, last year, there was a lot of discussion about the TIF plan. Oh, we won't, you know, here's everything we want to do, but we won't be able to do it. Don't even expect to be able to do it. Uh, but this is a mechanism to be able to accomplish that. I'm also looking at it from a commercial standpoint. I mean, commercial is not cheap either. I agree. So, no, I like it. I love it. So I think following the priority set forth in the TIF plan is the, the way to go. Mm -hmm. so, and at that time, that was a real high need we were talking about with all the, uh, all the housing needs. But we did run across that people aren't really excited about turning some of these properties into housing. I mean, we ran up against that a lot. Either way, this is an improvement. Mm -hmm. It is. Much. It is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nice job on that, Andrew. Thank you, Thank you Andrew. Uh, old business. Right, so this is where it gets a little dicey <laughs> with the amendments. Um, 
So first, Venture North's board did um, get that resolution in to USDA, and then Steve Brower at Venture North passed that on to me. It's in your board packets. Um, and that's just showing you know, Venture North's commitment to actually take over the funds and, and use them within um, kind of US, what the initial intention of the program was, activate those funds and get them out in our community to actually support small business and entrepreneurship, right? Um, however, so in talking with USDA right now, we currently have $27,988 um, that's based off of the rep sheet in, or the balance sheet in this board packet from this month. Um, that number 27,985 was the August number that was initially submitted to the USDA. Um, but the USDA initially granted the DDA in 07, $29,000. So that leaves us with a 1,000, yeah, 15 shortfall. I mean, with, with the August or with the most recent balance sheet, it's only $1,012. Um, but USDA is requesting that we cover that shortfall to make it whole. Um, the reason for that shortfall, we looked back through all the documentation that we had regarding the program. There were a lot, there's about eight different loans from 07 to current. And since the chamber's taken over, all that documentation has been done properly. It's more, it's a little dicey pre-2014. Um, there's really no financial documents that are either electronic or physical that show what, what occurred, where some of those interest payments went. Um, and so that's really problematic because, yeah, we had to write an explanation to the USDA saying, you know, due to the fact that there's such a high turnover rate in DDA directors, it's really unknown as to what could have occurred prior to 2014 because there are just no digitalized financial documents or physical ones that are within our files that we received when the city turned over the, the DDA files back in, what that been, 21 or 2020? 2020. So. That doesn't even make sense to me. How we don't have records. It's kind of a wild ride <coughs> for a while. Is this ever going to happen again? No. Right. No. Nope. Should, should, <laughs> absolutely should not, especially with, you know, actually having proper tracking now, because you should see some of the documents prior to, like, 2014, you know, like, Tyler was the director that really brought a lot of, like, more structure to it, and, like, had fairly good documentation, but prior to that, it is, they're just... Well, the office has moved so many times, yeah. so before me, it was at the City Hall, then it was down at the old Edward Jones building, uh, and then I moved it back to City Hall, and then now it's at the, so like all those different moves. Uh, I don't know what's happened to all the records. And different accounting firms. Yeah. Well. This is one of the reasons we, we decided to uh, contract for executive director services to the, yeah. to the chamber so we could consistent. You know, even, even if there's staff turnover, we have a consistent infrastructure supporting us. I'm doing way better now. <laughs> yeah, you had five. You had five DDA directors in the span of like. 10 years. That's not uncommon, though. The average DDA director yeah. is only in the position for a year and a half. So yeah, I, I, mean, I understand, and I'm really talking again. Thousand dollars is a lot of money, yeah. but still, it's an accounting. We're missing it somewhere. Yep. Yeah. But at the same time, if we don't get this resolved, we don't pay this back. Yep. Yeah. This money's just going to sit here do nothing. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so, if, it, if if we don't activate it, the USDA will request it back. So, too. so by giving it to Venture North, we're at least keeping it active within our community. For USDA, if they say, hey, okay, if you're not doing anything, give it. you have to give it back. And Jackie at USDA said, you know, you're, we're kind of doing you a favor by just asking for the initial 29, because it should be more with, in, like, with the interest yeah. payments occurred. Mm -hmm. So she's like, yeah, like, we'll, we'll cut, you cut your slack, you know, just the full 29, um, if you're, as long as you're able to make that whole, we'll call it good. And that's why I was asking. So what? What I was asking for was the last balance sheet that had a loan due on it. Because mm -hmm. what I'm thinking happened on on those at least is they just removed it from the balance sheet, 
it took the liability off and left the money, mm -hmm. the, the asset in the account without adjusting for that, number one, because there was like, I don't know, $5,000 at least outstanding on the balance sheet a year ago. Uh, but made, I'm thinking those payments that those people were making were probably just not going to the revolving loan fund account. But and that was we're going to have to backtrack into what happened uh, and where those funds were going. Can we now change accounting firms? Yeah, uh, we, we, we moved to Connie Taves. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, and then must have moved yeah. back at some point yeah. to that's uh, right. And new. And do we have a policy for bad debt? Well, we've talked about that because we had a situation when this all started, um, but I don't think we have anything in the yeah. There was only one loan. No, and I don't think they, I think they were made whole from yeah. selling equipment and things, and that was the, like, River Street Stockyards or something, yeah. even yeah. before I was here. Um, but that's the only loan, or the only loan that never got repaid in full from the business activity, and they had to sell assets to pay it off. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm aware, every single loan that has ever gone through that program has been paid. I mean, the, the only other, like, really sketchy one that I could find was one in, oh, it's like 2010. And they did a lawsuit. The DDA had to sue the company and get a settlement agreement. And I know there was issues with two loans in between me being director and the chamber mm -hmm. uh, that I I don't know what happened to. There wasn't doesn't seem like there was a lot of record keeping on payments and things like that. Um, the one that I can think of did it was there were situations in their personal life, but they did end up taking care of. So moving forward, so when my client walks in a day and says, you guys seriously don't have those records, I can say it's solved for one. And two, let's clean this up. Let's get this out of our hands and get it back to work again. Mm -hmm. So how do we solve this? Yep. So USDA, obviously there was an explanation saying, you know, get, given the amount of turnover, you know, across the, you know, a period of time in <coughs> inconsistent, some of the document keeping was prior to 2014. That was the explanation email sent to USDA. They're requesting we make it whole by transferring $29,000 to Venture North. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna request the um, full movement of current funds from the revolving loan fund in addition to the $1,000 and $1,011 from our, our general fund. We talked to Ed Bradford and he said that's that's going to be the simplest way to do it. Um, you just have to make sure that there's a paper trail saying this is what happened. This is why we do it. Wow. So the, for the audit of next yeah, year, figuring out what happened. I, do do we have like a box of files on the revolving loan fund somewhere? I have a you know a consideration to throw in. Uh, how many hours have you already spent on this? I'll volunteer my time though to go through. Okay. The, that's what I'm saying. You want to go through I, the box. I will come that's, through that's and I'll go through each file and try to figure out what happened to the, mm. the funding. That's what yeah. I'm I mean, I, I've spent a lot of time already, for at least 10 Relatively hours, just looking, looking through documents, trying to just collect the documents, because that was the tricky part is having to go through the paper documents and find all of those, and then also try to scrape the email in our electronic files that we had. Because, you know, going to your, going to your point, I, the, the important thing, one, is to, you know, not be in situations like this again in the future. I don't want to be in the, you know, loan administration or the loan administration record keeping business. We're getting out of that business, number one. Number two, uh, you know, making sure that our fix is well documented so a thousand dollars didn't just disappear and then we're asking the question where did the thousand dollars go next year? Yeah. Right? That's right. number two. Yeah. Number three, we've already spent a significant amount of staff time. I don't want to spend ten thousand dollars finding out where a thousand dollars went. More than a thousand dollars. Right. So if if you want to go through the box, I, I think that's terrific. Uh, you know but other than that, you know, I'd prefer to seal this up, get it done, and move on. 
Give me 30 days in the next board meeting, and I'll let you know when I find out. Okay. Is there a deadline for getting back to the USDA on this? No, I mean, it, it, so the bull's in our court, really. I mean, Venture North is prepped to receive these funds. USDA says you got the green light to transfer these funds. Um, it really just comes down to, to the board approving the full amount. Um, we'll let USDA know, and then they'll say, okay, yeah, like, you get to transfer funds and then working with Venture North though. What's, what's the best way to transfer these funds to you guys? Sure. Um, Let's give Tyler 30 days. What, what would you find in 30 days that is essentially not going to be transferring 29,000 to you? See to what world. the uh, balance sheet was doing at the time and match it up and make sure that uh, 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 liability is being decreased and the assets increasing. If it's not, problem on that day and then I can figure it out from there. But to Sammy's point, it is regardless of what we do, even if we find out where the problem is, um, which I, I do want to do, I it's going to end with us transferring twenty nine thousand dollars to venture north. So whether that's coming out of, I think we, we should look into it more. You know, if you want to do it's that, from the standpoint want... of a, you know, we're a public entity yeah. handling yeah. tax dollars, and I, you know, yeah, I think we can do both. I can put in a little bit of effort and, and try to investigate what happened. Right. So my suggestion is that we do both uh, move this thing along today, transfer a thousand bucks and get this done today. In a month, we may have a better explanation. Sure. You find out where the thousand went. We write a letter well, saying more than a thousand. Because it's the interest yeah. and, the and all that. that yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's out more than a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, we can do the forensics okay. later, but yeah. nothing yeah. about the forensics is going to change the fact that we want out of the loan administration sure. business, yeah. and yeah. these people will put the money to work. Right. Yeah. You both. I love the, the coverage. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're that end. <laughs> that sounds like a reasonable solution. I'll make a motion. So can I have a motion to approve the removal of yeah. 27 that was nine hundred and eighty dollars, and then in addition to adding, um, which will require yeah. adding a thousand dollars. Yeah, because I don't know yet. I don't think we want to like make a motion to put a thousand dollars in the revolving loan fund and pull out. I have another motion saying we're willing to remove the full twenty nine. Yeah. <laughs> move the money, which will include yeah. that, moving a thousand dollars from the general fund. And that was your motion. Yes. I have the motion restated. Yes. <laughs> For the audit. <laughs> Make the motion to move $1,000 to uh, general from general fund to the revolving loan account and then transfer that to uh, Venture North. I second that motion. Uh, the total amount that we're transferring. You're going to want to put that in that motion. Yeah. Yeah. Total amount. That will be transferred. Do you have that control? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. I wish you good fortune in your calls. <laughs> shine is the next item. No, no real update in with the Shine program. Um, Keeping an eye on any trees, any yeah. need improvement. So, work well, needs to be done. We'll make sure that it gets taken care of. So, okay, that we can get we get in contact. Yeah. Uh, Riverwalk. Still waiting on a couple of the. We separated the bid packages. We're still waiting on a couple of those back. I believe they're due the twenty second landscaping. Um, structural came back a little bit high. The electrical package came back low, which was good. Um, so, um, yeah, we're still getting the bids back, and then may have to rebuild that structural again. I'm still looking at some options there. What's the timeline on that, Bill? Like, is, is the EDA pushing you guys to be like, hey, like, we're going to. Yeah, they <laughs> I, mean, I know they've been working. They've been great. Yeah, so, I want it done by this next September. So, okay, gotcha. Keep you guys updated. Still getting the bids back. Okay. In the North River Walk, we have the grant agreement that's going to go on the 19th. <coughs> okay. Gotcha. Council, but, uh, congratulations on that 
property sale over there. I love the idea of connecting the North River Walk over there. That's great. It's been for sale for a while. And we did look, I think our, you know, I was looking why we had certain properties listed for sale. The, the um, Planning Commission approved the sale of those and some other ones. And that's why we have that. Um, Mike Canuti put those out for sale. But just so everyone's aware. That's great. Um, social district. No real update on, on our social district outside of the new business um, that we have for adding a, a business to the social district um, that's coming under new business. Uh. So, yep, no, no real update. There, I, during my conference, there was a lot of conversation about social district that was fairly productive and it was great to hear what other communities are doing. I know we had our sticker conversation last time, but you know, a lot of communities are just helping with, uh, we're, give, we're giving you the template rights and they're getting it scanned right on the cup. Um, kind of what we talked about, it sounds like that's a pretty popular method. Um, and, but then there are also a lot of communities doing that, hey, we source all the stickers and we're gonna give you all the stickers. And you know, that's just the responsibility of the DDA and they're willing to take on that expenditure um, to continue that program and make it enticing for businesses to uh, participate. So it sounds like that there was both, but um, a popular method if you didn't want to do the sticker was just, here's the template rights, get it printed right on your cup. Where, where did we leave it? Sorry, where did we leave business. the sticker? I like it, yeah, that's what I thought we did. Are you uh, on the events working group? I, I attend all of the ad hoc committee meetings that I, I know, know, of, <laughs> know of, so if there are I mean, Bill, it may, it may sound like there may have been a meeting or two that occurred that virtually. It's con confusing, but the city has an ad hoc events oh, committee, okay. and then there's a DDA one as yeah. well. So, yeah, the DDA one hasn't um, convened since uh, okay. the events trailer was discussed. It's it sounds like for the ad hoc city, uh, you know, events committee. Uh, you know, the social district, uh, getting the social district uh, perspective included in that planning would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, new business, ice melt skid. Bill, do you want to take this one? Sure. Can I give them some explanation here? So we have our new services agreement. It's in the packet here. And we decreased the amount the DDA owns. It went half of what it was. But one of the items was, you know, discussing with um, Kyle and the DDA was kind of a dissatisfaction with using rock salt on the sidewalk. So the idea was we could do a, a separate, a different type of material using a spreader. Um, and if you look at, I think it's item seven. For winter maintenance, we talk about specific non-salt ice control products for River Street sidewalk would be paid for and provided to the city by the DDA. So um, since, since this was agreed to back in July, um, we looked at this product ice melt, which is a, a combination of calcium chloride, some other products, some other items. It does have sodium chloride as well. It works at negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Rock salt only works at five degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little finer, too, um, than rock salt. Rock salt, you kind of, you almost have to, people crush it when they walk and then it starts working. So ice melt is considered as safer than rock salt for children and animals. It also works a little more effectively and kind of less damaging to, to um, items as well. So we tested out a bag, city so bought one, and then the next step is if we're gonna use this for the winter, we have the cost of a pallet on here, which is $900 for 50, 50 pound bags. And actually, it depends how much it snows, how much we're gonna use. It's good for two years, each bag. We could order less. I just thought we get it on a, on a pallet, it'd just be easier to kind of keep it in one area and have ready to go when we need it when it snows. What's the cost difference between this and rock salt? So rock salt we get, it's a commodity. We, we basically um, buy an amount every year, so it changes. I would think rock salt is considerably cheaper, but it's not providing um, 
how the DDA want for the downtown is my understanding. So I don't think it's more of a cost. It's not, but you're right. I don't know the exact cost difference per pound. Is it like a tenth or, or I'm seeing, half I'm, as much? Or? I'm seeing 60 to 80 per ton per when purchased in bulk. So I think you just get huge truckloads, and it's yeah. that sounds pretty inexpensive to me. The yeah, rock salt is pretty. Eighty per ton. I don't know. Yeah, this other stuff is really, you know, downtown. It would really be nice to have that because it really. Yeah. Yeah. I see a client bring that rock salt in. Right. Like, oh, there. Yeah. I don't have to put my boots on my dogs. But mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason I asked about the cost differential is, you know, a third of the walking is still on the streets where the rock salt is uh, but it sounds like it's prohibitively expensive to buy enough you just put the truck and put it on the trucks you know that are serving dda but, but and the loading method for a truck is different so we're talking about using the, the spreader which is a different piece of equipment than yeah. something for well I'd, I'd make a motion that we purchase that pallet and store it thank you I said we might need it all. Who knows what the winner will be? No. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, I, will say, I, was, I will say I did look up your price against the preemptive price too. And I should mention too, uh, by buying the pallet you mm -hmm. save some money. Mm -hmm. So look around. RFP for accounting services. So, upon request, um, getting multiple, you know, making sure that we, we are going to market for our vendors, um, we put together this RFP. We wanted to get it in before tax season hit um, because we're going to need this probably out. You can find a new vendor if we wanted to change vendors by next May or so, so we can actually have a contract ready to go for the next fiscal year um, if we want to make that transition. So just wanted to get this in front of you um, and we'll be able to release that. I know within our financial policy it is stated that, you know, we are encouraged to go local. So if there is a service that is comparable in quality and price that we have to pretty much choose the local one. So even if somebody from Grand Rapids or Cadillac is, you know, the same price point, um, we'd probably end up staying with Richards and McDougall just with our current financial policies that are in place and procedures. But just wanted to get this in front of you. I don't think it's bad to look around. Yeah. It's important that we do that. I'm the one that asked for it, so I'm, I'm in favor of it. I also agree if the price points are relatively close, local is important. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. There's something specific that you guys are looking for for the accountant? I think at the end of the day, Carmen, when we all sit here and deal with tax dollars, I think it's our responsibility to make sure that the pencil is sharp no matter who we're working with. So benchmarking uh, an accounting firm every so often is probably our responsibility, so that's where I, that's where I was coming. And then we will be kind of getting that out then. Um, get that out, get some bids back. Um, the next item is that amended piece where we needed approval for the 2025 meeting dates. Mm, great. Send those out. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's in the packet. Mm -hmm. um, it's right in between the RFP and the Love Wine application. Uh, but those are just regularly scheduled. Wednesdays, right? Yep. Yeah, they're just following our bylaws. Yeah. But we still need them to get approved so then they can be passed on to the city. I make a motion that we approve the meeting dates for 2025. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next item, uh, skipping the Love Wine application and then uh, the Milwaukee House Liquor License for Social District. They are looking to join the Social District and that's going to need our recommendation to City Council. City Council will make that approval, uh, but that's so uh, Michigan Liquor Control. Uh, Authority will, uh, they need that for their application. They're in the DDA, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the, across the street that's not the yeah so it's jones streets that divide yeah. so it's like Boyer and right. the house and the bda the social district goes beyond that right too right i made the last motion someone else do it <laughs> in favor? Aye. Are they really going to open a time? I don't know if they're going to open a time. I don't know if they're going to open a time. Yeah. I mean, I like bluefish. I'm pretty darn good. But. All right. So next item is the West Shore Bank account. Uh, we need a motion to remove Stacey Bywick and add Nicole Kaminsky to West Shore Bank account, uh, the DDA account for check and balance purposes. I'll make a motion. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the audit report, um, I've been working closely with the auditors that have been contracted through the city. Um, everything has been submitted and then we do have a draft audit in the packet for you guys to review and we'll need a motion to approve as well so we can finalize that. Um, everything came back um, with no complaints. The only small item that she said was to review um, the financial policies since it was dated back in 2018. So just making sure that we're continuing to update those and taking a look at that and getting them approved or adopted. Um, there were no, nothing to note. I mean, she said everything went well. Um, I will have someone from their team do a report, hopefully in the next meeting, assuming that we can get everything to line up. Does anybody have any questions about the audit or? Well, so we should re uh, approve the audit until we have the audit report from us. So um, right now we have the draft audit. We need right. to make a, a motion to approve. And then in December, we'll have the final copy that you guys will be able to take home with you. And then a presentation from the auditors. Where there'll be a, another motion for the yeah. final approval. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to yeah. only approving at the very end when we review the final audit. Mm -hmm. So, what's the draft for? Uh, what was that? It was just the draft. Just the, is it the draft one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. the draft's on there for um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to see. The, the reason why we have the draft in there is to see if you guys have any other questions or changes that need to be made before it goes to final. So we're going to make a motion to review the draft, and then we're going to make another motion to finalize the audit. Is that what I'm understanding? No. Does that make sense? doesn't to me, but I, I guess I'm curious what the draft, I mean, this is our draft proposal. They're supposed to audit it. Whether it's a draft or not, they audit the, our books, and then they give us a final mm -hmm. with all of the issues in it, or no issues, and then we approve yep. that financial audit. I guess we could talk about any things that we may see that we would like addressed yeah. in this draft. So but according to the auditor, she had sent me a tax of the draft of the audit report to be reviewed and approved. So once that's done, 
they will finalize it and bound and copy copies of the audit report and then give their final presentation in the next meeting. I think we could receive it and then continue on people getting back any comments to Carmen by the end of the week to be approved. People get back by next Friday or something. So, if I just to summarize, <clears throat> linguistically this is challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, their audit report is final. This is their recommended audit report. Mm -hmm. It's only draft pending our comments. So, mm -hmm. our yeah. review of that is what makes it final in their eyes. Does that make sense? That I understand. Okay. So once we finalize it, they're gonna submit. They're gonna submit us the final copy for all of us to take home with us in the next meeting, and then they're gonna give us their final audit report in the next meeting, assuming that everything goes well today. <coughs> I think people received this Thursday, Friday last week, so it sounds like people need some time to review it. It's the only thing. So. I didn't really go deep. I just kind of skimmed. So I think uh, I make a motion to receive the draft and provide any comments to Carmen by Friday, and then final it at that point after after comments are received. Okay. That makes sense. I have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Tell me, I have two days to review this next Friday. <laughs> it's bolded and underlined, all the good stuff. I read at a kindergarten level, look at me. There's no pictures on this one. <laughs> I gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So we will not have a final audit presentation in the next meeting. Just making that clear. Okay. So, uh, DDA financial policies? So, Give to our attention that we need to actually adopt financial policies because that's something that came out of the audit was that we haven't actually formally adopted any financial policies. <clears throat> so that's needed. It was dated back in 2018, so it's important that we review it and make an update dating 2024. October so that way we and I think this should be something that we continue to review in our annual meeting every year just to make sure that we have that a standard protocol um, to make sure that the auditors know that we're we are looking at this. Yeah, we had our attorney uh, talk to our board yesterday and everything from you know conflict of interest to whistleblower to the insurance that we have on board members to a uh, policy for bad debt or our investment policy mm -hmm. she recommends we look at every single year so we don't have to change it but yeah. it's just good practice that every board member is reminded of those policies so yeah and with the legislation change in 2018 with the um, just legislation having to do two informational sessions that should <coughs> be something that you know that session's being right. used for is, hey, we have our TIF plan in front of us, we have our development plan in front of us, and then, you know, probably the financial financial policies, maybe, maybe the, you know, annual budget update, so really using those informational sessions to walk through some of those uh, procedural. Sure. And, and again, with, I, don't, I don't remember the, I mean, how many different policies we have. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm saying, like for us, we got over 300 and some, but it's like there's a rotation. Every year you look at this one, every two years, this mm -hmm. one kind of thing. And I think we should put something like that together. Gotcha. Especially what Carmen's saying with the financials, yeah. definitely every year. Yeah. But if there are other policies that go with our bylaws or anything, we should probably okay. have those on a rotation as well. And I don't think it's have to be like yeah. every, you know, maybe Can you, uh, for the next meeting, get a list of the policies together? And, uh, and if it's possible.
possible for you to suggest a schedule for review of those policies. Okay. Yeah, and just as a reminder, we do have our informational session at, you know, they're adjacent to our next DDA meeting in December, where we'll take some type two, you know, we'll adjourn the formal meeting and then go into like an informational session, in which that will be our review for TIF plan, bylaws, things like that. Did you send that out? Yeah, that was in our last board uh, meeting. We approved that special meeting minute, and then the public, and then the notification for that meeting is going to have to go out. I apologize, I was yeah. sleeping during that part of the meeting. All right. Except adjustments coming in. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so we do need a motion to adopt the present policy to align with the. It, unless you want to wait until no, that's fine. We can well, unless you want to put it on that at uh, rotation, wait for December. It's up to you guys. I think we'll probably need a motion to actually accept it, and then we can at least review it um, okay. at that session, just so we can get in line and <laughs> you know as quick as possible. And then we'll, we'll still have that review if we want, uh, so you don't really get enough the weeds. <laughs> Make the motion that we accept the financial policies. It's ready. Second. Wait for it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, public comment. Thank you. Uh, board comment. Anybody? The transition looks like it's going good. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Garvin. Thank you. 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 Thank you